Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a reverse pivot. Now this particular video is going to show a reverse pivot that has uh, nested uh, column headings. I have another video on reverse pivots that basically have one column heading, for example, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. But for this particular video, we're talking about a reverse pivot where we have two column headings. Say, for example, we have Q1 to Q4, and that's under year 2013, and we have another set of columns, Q1 to Q4, but that's under 2014. So the steps involved here are a little bit different, and we can do this uh, natively in Excel using a pivot table and just doing some rearranging, and I'll show you how this could get done. Let's go into our example tab here. So this is the table I'm going to take out for my pivot and repivot. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy uh, this table range, Control C to copy. I'm just going to go onto a new sheet here and just put it anywhere, Control V to paste. I'm going to uh, click and just paste the values. I'm not going to paste any of the, the colors, just make it easy and simple. So I'm going to paste the values here and we see our values here. So what I need to do in this case is I need to transpose this table first because what I want to do is I want to combine 2013 with Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, and the same here with 2014. But the way to do that first is I need to transpose these column headings into uh, this particular row label here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Control C to copy and just put it, bring it into any cell here, and go under the uh, Home tab. Let me go ahead and expand my my ribbon here. Let me go double click that to expand it so it comes back up. Uh, it was kind of minimized at first. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do a paste and paste transpose. And what you see now is it has transposed it. The items show up in the column headers here and the previous column headers, they are kind of uh, row headers in a way. So what I want to do is I want to fill this down here. So if I didn't have that much data, I could just go ahead and control C and then uh, control V to paste that all there. But let's say that I had a lot of data back here. Maybe I had, uh, this was year 2000 and I had 10 years worth of data. And if we wanted to control C to copy, control V to paste, it might take a lot. So there is another way we can actually do this. Let me go ahead and just control Z to undo this part. And there's another way we can do it to make it much easier. So the other way to do it is what we're going to do is we're going to select the first blank cell under a one that has a non-blank, the year here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and just uh, select that range there because it ends there at Q4 2014. And I want to go under Find Select is under the Home ribbon. And I want to go to, so I want to go to the blank cells. I'm going to go ahead and click on the special button here. And I want to go to all the blank cells. So what's going to do when I click OK, it's just going to select all the blank cells. But I have this first cell selected, A13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a formula and I'm going to equal it to the cell above. So what this is going to do is once I press a special keyboard combination, Control Enter, it's going to copy uh, from the cell above and for the next cell, it's going to copy from the cell above and etc. going all the way down. So let me go ahead and press Control Enter. It's going to copy that formula all the way down to the bottom of my range I selected. And so you can see here now I have 2013, 20, all the way from Q1 to Q4, 2014, Q1 to Q4. And that's exactly what I want. Now the next thing I need to do is I want to combine these two together, 2013 and Q1. So let me go ahead and just kind of remove uh, these items. Let me go ahead and select that, right click and just select delete. And I'm going to add a column here. Go ahead and right click, uh, insert. So insert a column. And what I want to do is I want to combine these two together. So I'll just use the equal and then select that cell, put an ampersand there, and I'm going to use some kind of delimiter. And I'm going to use a colon for my delimiter. I have to put it within double quotes. So quote, double quotes, colon, double quotes, and then ampersand to join the next cell. Uh, press enter. And you can see it's joined it now, 2013 colon Q1. I'm going to do is uh, drag the fill handle down, and it's going to copy that formula all the way down. So that's what I need. I don't need this column anymore, so I can go and select that and delete it. Right click, delete. And oops, I forgot to. Um, uh, save that as values because it's the form that's in. Since this is referring these cells and I deleted it, it it's, it's gone missing. So I'm going to go select that cell, Control C to copy, and then I'm just going to paste values. 
And now it just pastes the values. You can see that the formula is not there anymore. So I'll go ahead and select the cell, these two uh, columns here, right click and just press delete. And now that stays the same. So what I want to do now is I want to transpose uh, these range of cells again. So I'm going to press Control C to copy that, select a cell down here, and then go ahead and transpose that. So now I've got my cell ranges the way I wanted it, and I can just use the pivot command now. Now, I can't really go under insert uh, a pivot table because I need to go through the pivot wizard, which was an option that was available, I believe, in 2000, except 2007 and before, and in 2010 uh, and later, I think they took it out, unfortunately. But you can still use the keyboard shortcut. It's Alt D P, and it's going to bring up the pivot table pivot chart wizard. And what I want to do is I want to select uh, multiple consolidation ranges and go ahead and click Next. And I want to create the page fields. So select that radio button, click Next. And now we're going to choose our range here. So my range is going to be here to here. You can see now it's select that range. I'll click Add and click Next. And I'll just put on a new worksheet. So once I put on a new worksheet, you can notice that it really didn't look like it did anything. It looks pretty much the same. But what we need to do is we want to get the output from this. So to get the detailed output from this pivot, ta pivot table, all you need to do is select under the grand total and double click it. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring you the output of that table. And you can see here that it looks like it's almost done. I have my row, which is my name. I'm just going to rename that. And I have this column value, which is separated by a colon. So I need to unseparate that from the colon. And when I do that with a, another feature in Excel, the, the text to column feature, it needs an extra column here. So depending on, on how many you have here, maybe if instead of it was a two column, instead of having a, a two column, and then maybe it was three column, maybe you would have three. But I only have two here, so I, I'm just going to add an extra column here. Select that right click and go under insert a column. So I want to select this column, and I want to use the text to column feature. So I, that is under data. And all I need to do is just under the data tools, select the text of columns. And what it's going to do is it's going to help me separate those two uh, variables that are in between the colon. So there's, it's delimited by colon, so I select that option, click Next. And it doesn't have it here, so I'm going to go click Other and type in the colon. You can see now the preview, it's already separated out for me. So I'll go ahead and click Next, and I'll just go ahead and click Finish. Oops. It's going to ask if there's data there. There's really no data here, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now it's actually separated out. And I can just go ahead and change this to year, and I can change this to quarter, and we have our uh, data. So basically, we've unpivoted or created a reverse pivot. Uh, this is, we turn this into this. So we can see that we've actually done that. The first value is 277, the last value is 168. Let's see if that is the case 277 and then uh, 168. So that is our value. Then. So if you have a feature called Power Query, there is actually another way to do this, and I have another video on that. But if you didn't have Power Query or you are on older Excel versions, uh, this is one way that you can take to get it like this, maybe in a final format, maybe you're getting it from uh, some other PDF or some other file, and you want to really do some further analysis, and you can just turn it into a table, a proper table where you have uh, your first row as header fields and everything else is a record. So basically, you can turn that in there, and you can do further analysis on it. You can do more slicing and dicing uh, on that data. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.